Look, I understand the Hebrew Israelite movement. I want to understand a little bit more of where you guys are coming from, okay? Because how I, do you understand it from London? The Hebrews in London? Yeah, it might be a bit different. Because that, that's why I'm coming to you. I want to see where you're coming from. Because I'll be honest with you, yeah. I feel like there's a bit of an there's a bit of an overemphasis, yeah, on, what? on race and ethnicity. That's my position. But let me tell you, as a, as a Muslim, as a Muslim, I come from a paradigm which says that whatever color you are, whatever race you are, it doesn't matter. That you all have the same accessibility to. Yeah, uh, Isaiah, I'm listening. Yeah, um, you, have, you, you, you all have the same Isaiah accessibility to the law and to God's grace and to gu guidance. That's the paradigm I'm coming from. Do you understand? I appreciate that there were times, and the Quran says this, that the children of Israel, yeah, the children of Israel were the favored people. Yes. I appreciate that, and we believe in that, it's part of our belief. There was a time where that was, God chose those guys, the, the children of Israel are the chosen people. But Did now, it change? Yeah, we're saying no, they're still, we're, we're still giving them their virtue, yeah? The children of Israel have their virtue, but what I'm saying to you is this, yeah? What I say to you is that the lineage, and race, and ethnicity, is a secondary right. issue, if you like, yeah? The main issue is... According to what? Access to guidance. All humanity. No, so, no, no. Because if, 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 yeah. if you come from the paradigm, paradigm of Islam, right? Yeah. So you go and buy the teachings of the Quran, the Quranic teachings, right? Yeah. So you would have to go by what that teaches. Because if you go outside of it, then yeah. you can't really bring the Quran into the argument because now you're speaking about your personal uh, uh, understanding of something, yeah. right? Yeah. So now if you say... That you don't that you don't feel it's about so yeah, 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 race yeah. or ethnicity, the way, then so you're as, talking as against Muslim, your own Quran. As Muslims, we believe in Abraham, we believe in Isaac, we believe in Ishmael, we believe in Moses, we believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah? We believe that Jesus was the Messiah. We believe that he came with the miracles and the signs, but that he was not God or the Son of God. We, we, we reject that. We, we say that God doesn't have children. I, I know you do. Yeah. yeah, and we say that God doesn't come in the form of a man, that we reject that, yeah? So that's our paradigm. We say that in fact. There was a man to come after Jesus, who he told us about. Jesus told us there was a man coming after him. Yeah. And this is mentioned in the book of Isaiah chapter 42, yeah? In the Bible, you'll find, if you look into the book of Isaiah chapter 42, the book describes a man that's going to come in the future, yeah? And you're going to say that's Muhammad. Now, let me tell you what, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you make the, the, the conclusion. You tell, you tell us who it is. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 42. You get Galatians 3.16, Before Galatians 3.16. No, that's, that's no, I, I want him to get your scripture, but I want him to hold. Matter of fact, your code, Baba Kasha. Because Galatians is poor now. We're going to. We're going to Galatians 3.16. Oh, we're going to. We're going to. New Testament. I want you to get his scripture. But what I'm saying is that Isaiah 42 details, yeah, very clearly. A man that's gonna come and listen to the look at the parameters that has been. I've been put. in your room for a few minutes. Yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. when it's my turn, I I'm hope you show the same patience. Of course, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna say to you, I want you to tell me who's this guy, because in, in in Isaiah 42 it says it's gonna guy come a, a man, a prophet, yeah? He's gonna do justice in the world, etc. But listen to this. He's gonna come to the Kedarites, people from Kedar. Now, every Bible scholar will tell you that the people of Kedar are. You know those, who they are? Yeah, the Arabs. And it comes even more specific when it Where's says... Where's Qadar located? Arabian Peninsula, no doubt, yeah? Were there Jews there? Were there Israelites there? were Jews there. there. Yeah, okay. yeah, look, so no doubt. Go ahead, I'm listening. No problem. The people of Qadar, yeah? Now, that's number one. Number two, it even specifies in verse 11 that the people will proclaim on the mountaintops. They'll proclaim that they'll be rejoicing on the mountaintops, yeah? Of Sela. Mm -hmm. Of Sela. Now, where are the mountain tops of Sela? I'll tell you where the mountain tops of Sela. This is an, actually a place, a really peninsula, I was called Medina. And the mountains called Sela are there now. Now, the only person in history we know who came to the Arabs and let, got the people of the mountain tops of Sela to rejoice was Prophet Muhammad. And he was from the lineage of Ismail. Ishmael. Ismail. So, the point we're making is that the natural extension from the, Jew, the Hebrew Israelite faith is Islam. Because Islam confirms the natural extension from the Hebrew Israelite faith is Islam. Because Islam, Islam meaning, meaning, meaning you're what? saying it's an offshoot, a branch off? No, no, no. I'm saying that it's, it didn't end with Moses. It didn't end with Jesus. We're saying that there was a man that's going to come in the future. And that man is, is mentioned in the Bible. 
that man who came it's to the funeral. So, so he's gonna read the scripture. Yeah, read the scripture. And you said he's gonna mention that man. Yeah, if you read the whole of Isaiah 42. Let's see. Let's go. Yeah, read it. 42 and 1. Wait, wait. The whole chapter. You want him to read a whole chapter nah, right now? It's not. G give me a particular verse. All right, go from verses 8 to yeah. verses 13. All right, reasonable. Go ahead. Um, Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8 to 13. So now, just to get sum it up real quick, saying uh, this chapter in Isaiah is going to be speaking of the man that you call Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, that's my that's 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 my contention. Okay. Go ahead. On uh, verse 8, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Mm -hmm. Either my praise to graven images. Behold, to former things that are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring mm -hmm. forth, I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth. Yet that go down the sea, and all that is therein, the isles, the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice, the villages that Hadar does inhabit, inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Mm -hmm. Let them give the glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. The Lord shall go forward as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. 13 number. You said 13. Yeah. You read 13? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, you said it was going to say Muhammad's name. I don't say it's going to say his name. It's say no. it's did he not? To, did no, he not? No, no, I said it's going to describe. You said it's going to say his name. It's going to describe the parameters. People that, a man that's going to come to Kedah, it's going okay. to get the people to rejoice. 